module two, analysis of algorithm efficiencies and the brute force method, two topics. Algorithm efficiencies, this part, uh, we will have, you know, introduced some asymptotic notations, uh, pretty abstract. Yeah, but we need to use that kind of notations to describe uh, efficiencies. Yeah. So then brute force method. Today we will use the brute force method to solve a problem. Yeah. Part A, problem solving from experience and elimination method. Yeah. 8.1. Selection, uh, selection sort. Yeah. So that's the title <clears throat> of a sorting algorithm. Yeah. So let's look at the problem first. Problem description. Problem number four of this class sort and array. Yeah. Problem description. Yeah. Given the an array, our usual notation like this. Question, how to sort it in ascending order? The problem is so simple, okay, yeah. So this is our first solution, yeah. So let, let's call solution for the sort problem. For the problem type, our basic problem type, we learned search problem, selection problem, now third type, sort problem. Yeah, these three uh, fundamental problem types in our algorithms. Yeah. yeah, the reference from textbook I give you here. Yeah, all right. All right, so now let's do some work and analysis. In order to solve this problem, let us try to organize our thinking. Yeah. Try, yeah, because when you start to work on the problem, you need to you need to find the, you know, find some way, or you need to find some easy place to get in, right? Yeah. Otherwise, how to get started? We need to find some relatively easy place to get started. Yeah. All right. So let's see. <clears throat> because uh, in our everyday life, when we encounter a new problem, think about your experience. What is your typical thinking in solving a real world problem? Just recall a little bit, because in your real world life, you need to solve many different problems. Small problems, relatively hard problems, many problems, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that, that experience myself. Yeah, I need to solve many problems, you know, everyday life problems, all right? Yeah, usually we find, we try to find a solution from our experience. So we try to recall, do we have some similar experience that we can use related to this particular problem? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, many people, they search, you know, on the YouTube video, you know, try to find, you know, some videos to give instructions. Yeah. I do that myself. Also, yeah, yeah, but 
Here, we take this approach. We try to connect our current problem, the sorting problem, to our experience. Here, the experience, I refer to the our module Y experience. Yeah, so that's the, you know, most direct experience related to our module two. Yeah, module two, you know, we just get started. So the only experience related to this class, module one. Yeah, so we want to connect to module one content. All right, then explore properties. Yeah. In order to make the connection, yeah, you need to explore properties. Yeah. All right, so these two items, the guidelines. Yeah. So when we get started, we use these two guidelines. Okay, yeah. All right, so let me apply it. Yeah. Try to use this you know, these two guidelines to help us, all right? Then another commonly used thinking method, backward thinking. All right, so that's, you know, very, you know, it's a commonly used thinking method in our daily life also, backward thinking, yeah. So here, how do we, shape how do we you know uh elaborate this backward thinking yeah, in this way yeah because look at the goal so what is goal this is the goal right yeah so the given array in ascending order this is the goal okay all right the backward thinking thinking terrace. Our starting point. We start from our goal. Oh, that all right. And we do backward thinking, going backward. That's the backward thinking. Yeah. So we make the goal as our starting point. So what do you mean starting point? We assume we have already sorted the given array the given array is already in ascending order okay that's that becomes our starting point yeah all right question if the array is sorted that's our assumption starting point you can start from there what property can you, we discover because you know, here we need to explore the property, the guideline, right? What property can we discover? Okay, yeah. Let's you know try to visualize our situation. Yeah. Here, yeah, before we get into the details, I make some reasonable assumption. Yeah. So the assumption is we assume all the elements in the given array are distinct although the problem does not tell us that information that means the elements usually they are not distinct okay we allow duplicate elements okay yeah but why here we can add some extra non-existent extra assumption for convenience first in our discussion if the elements are distinct then we do not say a lot of words related to element values right but well, the problem is this assumption, does it cause any problem? No, it does not cause any problem. Because 
Uh, let's think in this way. Uh, first, we solve the problem under this assumption. Okay, yep. That's our first step. Second, after we solve it, then can we remove this assumption? Right? Yeah. After we find a relatively easier solution for this assumption, then we can remove this assumption. We in our you know programming. So when we need to write the code to implement this algorithm, we can remove this assumption, all right? We allow duplicate elements. So in our code, so we will consider the case that duplicate elements are allowed. And we only modify our code slightly. That modification is very simple. We don't worry about it. Okay. That little modification is so simple. So we don't worry about a little more extra work on it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the rationale behind this assumption. Okay. So we are fine. Yeah. So we can do that. Yeah. All right. So now, Let's do our work. Yeah. Yeah. Visualize the problem, the you know, the current. Yeah. How to connect this problem to the minimum problem? Because in our module one, we we didn't learn many related problems. The closely related problem to this one, it looks like that finding the minimum, that problem, right? Yeah. So that one, you know, looks somewhat related to our current problem. Yeah. All right. So let's put it there and start working on the current problem. Yeah. All right, so let's look at our current situation. We already assume that this array has been sorted like this in ascending order. Okay, yeah. All right. Now let's try to find one of the properties. We may have many properties, but here we just want to find some obvious property here okay yeah all right when you see this ascending sequence yeah how can you connect it to the minimum problem yep yeah. so this ascending sequence elements in the array what kind of relationship can you observe connecting to the minimum problem? Yep. So which element is the minimum, right? Yeah, first. Which element is the minimum? The first one, right? That is very obvious. The first one is the minimum. Yeah. Or can you think in another way? All right, can you think, because it is obvious that the first one is the minimum. Yeah, all right, so here, assumption, yeah. based on the given assumption, yeah. yeah. First one is the minimum. All right. Yeah, so that is one, our first observation. Okay, all right. Then, can you reorganize this sentence to make your thinking in different angle? Change the angle, change the view of your thinking. 
Yeah, that's another commonly used way in our logic thinking. In our logical thinking, change our view. Here, let me rewrite the sentence. The same meaning, same meaning, but I after I rewrite it, I change my view on it. All right, so let's my write this way. Okay. The minimum should be the first element in sorted array. Right? Yeah. So that is the property we discovered. Yeah. So we need to discover the property, right? All right. Now you can see after we look at this diagram, yeah, we discover this property. The minimum should be the first element in the sorted array okay yeah pretty simple yeah all right with this view we can get very close to our solution yeah all right so let's look at that all right yeah yeah because that property we can connect to the minimum problem easily because the minimum, that means we need to let us find the minimum first. Let's find the minimum first, okay? And we know how to find it from our previous minimum problem, okay? Yeah. After we find a minimum, we know that element must be the first one in the destination sorted array. How about that? Okay, yeah. So let's assume the first time when we work on the given array, we find the minimum of that array and that element, we assign it to A0 a0, that is the first element in our destination sorted array. How about that? That connection, that kind of natural connection, right? Yep. So you can see we get the first element of the sorted array. That's the first step. All right. Yes. Okay, some progress. Yeah. Here, I like to introduce a concept called in-place concept. In-place concept, yeah. That's, you just understand this concept from our nat natural language, in-place, something in-place. Yeah, same meaning in our nat natural language understanding. Yeah. But later, yeah, later, uh, you will see we have another meaning of in place yeah that will be different that will be different different from our natural language understanding and in this one yeah we just use our natural language understanding yeah here because that a0 the minimum we put it as the first element in our destination array we call it we put it in place we put that element in place in its right position in the final sorted array in place concept that simple all right yep yeah. so here the element is placed at the position when the array is sorted okay in the right position when the array is sorted 
that meaning okay yeah so with this concept then we can say the first time when we apply the minimum solution minimum problem solution yeah we can put the one element in place how about that that's the conclusion okay yeah all right after that then elimination method yeah we use that elimination method last time right yeah. think about yeah i talk about elimination method last time okay yeah here let us use the elimination method another time yeah all right how to use this elimination method which element we should eliminate the first one a zero because a zero is already in place right then we don't worry about a zero okay it's done a zero it is in its right position it is done why we need to look at it anymore why we need to touch it we don't need to touch it anymore right yeah we can forget about it right a zero in other words we can eliminate it from our consideration yes here we apply the minimum uh, sorry we apply the elimination method in this way we just eliminate a zero from our consideration so we can reduce the problem size the problem size is reduced by one okay yeah all right so here next round we do not we exclude a zero so our next round processing the first round processing we include a zero but our second round processing let us take away that a zero and only consider the remaining elements in the array all right can we apply the minimum solution another time second time and the second time we can also find a minimum right that minimum we assign it as a one in our destination array how about that destination array a1 the next element that is in place right yeah. a1 is also in place okay yeah yeah so here you can see with this consideration yeah we get this conclusion in each round we place one element in place. Each round, we scan our current subarray. Yeah, because our, the array to be processed is shrinking. Okay, every round, its size is reduced by one. Okay, when we start, we work on the whole array, the size is n after the first round processing we scan the elements from left to right and we apply the minimum solution on it and then we get a minimum and we make the first element in place after that we eliminate that first element in place and we look at the remaining n minus one elements and apply the minimum solution another time and put the second element in place and so on okay yeah next round another round until we complete you know or until we place all the elements in place how about that yeah because our goal put all elements in place yeah here so we have another obvious observation okay so that is when all elements 
are in place. Okay. The array is sorted. So we're done. When we put all the elements in the given array in place, we complete the sorting. That simple. Okay. Yeah. So we're done. Yeah. We find a solution. Yeah. So that's the whole procedure. That's the whole idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here you can see in this discussion, you can see how many items we have learned. Yeah. First, learning from our experience. Yeah. Yeah. Then we try to explore properties. by observing the current situation in our problem. Yeah, all right, yeah. And uh, after we find some property, yeah, so then we can apply the solution of some existing related problem and to make progress yeah all right and when we do the second processing we can apply a elimination method to reduce the problem size to make the problem smaller and smaller easier and easier until we get the whole problem solved. That's pretty much the procedure. Okay, yeah. And uh, this procedure is quite general. So you can apply this procedure on many other computing problems. Okay, all right, yeah. So that here, you already, you can see the solution, right? Yeah, next. Uh, all right, so let's do some further discussion. Question, how to make all elements in place? Yeah, okay, yeah. From the, so here, uh, let us look at the, you know, uh, efficiency issue, yeah. Because after we solve a problem, we need to know how many comparisons do we need, right? Yeah. yeah. So we need to look at the efficiency issue. Okay. All right. Our first round processing, we apply the minimum problem solution. Yeah. So we get this one. Second time, another minimum of the existing subarray, a second element in place. So the diagram is like this. All right, yeah. So we just visualize the whole process in this way, yeah. All right, so then the conclusion, yeah. So I wrote it before. So when all the elements in the array are in place, this array is sorted, okay, all right. Efficiency analysis. Let us count the number of comparisons. All right. Can you see? Yeah, here. Yeah. So, in order to see this one, uh, let's see. Yeah, all right. Yeah, let me. Yeah, because the formula is like this. Yeah. How do you see that? Yeah, let me just. Uh, explain a little more because when you ap apply the minimum problem solution the first time you need n minus one comparisons right based on our solution our solution is the problem size minus one okay yeah 
the solution of the minimum problem. Okay, yeah. Problem size minus one. Okay, yeah. That solution. The first time our problem size is m, so m minus one. That's the number of comparisons. But the second time, the problem size becomes m minus one after elimination method, right? We eliminate the first element. So the problem size, the second time, the problem size equals n minus two, okay? Yeah. So the problem size, sorry, problem size n minus one, right? Yeah, problem size, the number of elements after one element elimination, n minus one, but the number of comparisons, the problem size is minus one, so that is n minus two, and so on, n minus three, all right? Yeah. The second to last, that's one, but last one, zero, right? Yeah. The last element, when we process last element, we do not need to do comparison, okay? Yeah, all right. So then let us add up all these numbers. Yeah, so that's the, our formula, okay? Yeah, so we get this expression, okay? Yeah, after that, then we can look at the best case, worst case, and average case. What is the best case? What is the worst case? What is the average case for this particular problem? Okay, yeah. It's pretty easy. The answer is pretty easy. So you can try it yourself first. Yeah. All right. Here, uh, I like to discuss or we try to do a summary on this elimination method yeah it, it looks pretty simple right based on your intuition yeah but mo many times people may not be aware of it okay yeah this is a simple method but many of you may not be aware of it okay yeah yeah, so here we should be aware of it. Yeah, we may need to apply this elimination method many, many times in this class. Yeah, all right. So here, the goal by elimination method, we can reduce the problem size. After elimination, our problem size is reduced. Okay, yeah. So we call the problem size reduction. Yeah, problem size reduction. Yeah. So that's another commonly used approach in our problem solving. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the smaller the problem size, the easier the problem. Yeah. So that's the some general property. When the problem size becomes larger and larger, then the problem becomes harder and harder. Yeah, quite natural. Okay, yeah, yeah. The general principle, yeah. But although here we treat this sentence as the general principle, it does not mean there is no exception, right? Think about that. There must be some exception. Yeah. Although we have the general principle, that means that principle works most of the time for the 
ordinary situation. But we may have some exceptional, special situation. The principle may not work. So we allow that that happen. All right, we allow that happen. Here, I like to give you an example. Yeah. The example we learned last time. Example. Last time. Okay. Yeah. Last time we evaluate evaluate monomial, right? Evaluate monomial. Let's say p of x equals x to the nth power. The monomial, right? Yeah. And here in this special question, what is the problem size? Okay. The problem size. equals that n okay equals the value of n that's the problem size yeah the meaning here it's different from our array case our array case problem size yeah, so here array case the problem size equals yeah so let me write right here equals the number of elements in the array that's the meaning okay the problem side but in our monomial case it's different it's not number of elements Okay, here the problem size, that's another meaning of the problem size. So we call the, the magnitude. Magnitude of N. Okay, the value of N. Yeah, so that's another interpretation of the problem size yeah. and in this example then that's the exceptional case yeah. because it may not be the larger the problem size the easier the problem <laughs> why because we consider when n equals the power of two then we do repeated squaring then the problem very easy to solve right and the two to the kth power we can get the size very large right even when the size is large the problem still pretty easy to solve right yeah but in that case we can treat that example that's the exception exceptional case Okay, yeah, yeah. So the when we talk about some principle, yeah, principle that means we can apply that principle in general. How about that? So we apply this principle in general. Okay. But we allow some exceptions. We allow some exceptions. All right. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So another thing, when some elements do not change the outcome, they can be eliminated from the consideration. Yep. So that's the way how we implement the elimination method. Yep. So that's the way we implement the elimination yeah, method implementation implementation okay yeah all right yeah 
So from now on, yeah, so we will have this important, simple, but important, effective method in our mind. Whenever we have some similar situation, we need to apply this method. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah.